Welcome to A Canadian Investing in the U.S., a podcast and YouTube channel focused on Canadians buying real estate with host Glenn Sutherland. Welcome to another episode of A Canadian Investing in the U.S. Uh, This week, my guest is Gary Hibbert. Gary, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, wow. That's a that's a deep question. A little bit about myself, man. I I used to So I'll do the, the quick version. Um, I used to work in a corporate world, worked at TD Bank for a number of years, got to the point where I just didn't really like my job anymore. More importantly, I knew that it wasn't going to get me to where I wanted to be. And uh, and it was just because I realized that uh, inflation was uh, was outpacing what I was making on a yearly basis at my job. And so when I understood that real estate was where I needed to be, um, it's really kind of gotten to the mindset piece. Then I started uh, following people like Robert Kiyosaki and uh, really got a hold of the importance of understanding what assets are. And especially, you know, when you go back into history and understanding how money works and knowing that the dollar was um, unpegged from the U.S. dollar, then I knew that the paper was worthless. And so since then, I got into real estate investing. I, I help, uh, helped hundreds of in, other investors. I got a club out here in, in the Durham region where we help other investors to 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 understand, open up their eyes to real estate investing and, and, and owning assets. And uh, and that's that's what I do now. I left my job about maybe six years ago and haven't looked back, haven't looked back. And now we are into some crazy stuff, right? And so now I got to help navigate my my clients, not even my clients, myself through this, right? And so we're really just trying to get a, a, ahead of it and get a good handle of it. Um, I still think that this is the best place to be in, in, in real estate, but... Uh, you know, there's definitely going to be some murky waters ahead. Definitely, and we I'll go back and touch briefly on your uh, your meetup too, because that's actually how we met. Um, he, yes, he does. If you probably should find him online to see who is the speakers, and even just become a member if you're local. But for me, I, I he has some great speakers, and that's one of the reasons I drove all the way to Cambridge before I even knew him from Cambridge to Ajax, because I'm like, I want to hear these guys talk, and so uh, and he had. The night I went there was like the ultimate night of speakers. I don't know if I'm going to name drop, but he had a really good guest. The KWCREI had really good guests. And um, what's his name? Um, anyway, there was a was big a, show. Was it a speaker? Tr- yeah, a yeah. Speaker? Yeah, there was a big uh, – Tony Robbins was in Toronto the same night too, and I wanted to see all three shows. <laughs> and I was like, nope, you know what? I'm going out to Ajax. Let's go, uh, let's go check this out. And then I – I'm glad I did. <laughs> I, I feel honored that you came to see me as a, a, over Tony Robbins. Wow. Wow. I but also, that. you're a little bit more affordable than Tony Robbins, to be completely <laughs> honest. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, like you mentioned, we're we're going through some some intense stuff right now. And actually, mm-hmm. we were talking before we actually started this show. And um, I guess we'll we'll go right into that off the start. What I've spent my whole day doing was being proactive. And I think what's one of the, the main things to do is, you know, I was talking to lenders mostly today and I was, yep. as I do a lot of vendor take backs and it was talking to them, you know, telling them just being completely upfront that I have cash reserves. But if this was to draw out for a long period of time that we should come up with a plan, right? There right. should be, it, it's to open the dialogue. Uh, it's to, to see what's going on in it. I think it's a lot easier for them to swallow if you've been talking about it beforehand than just showing up one day and saying, I don't have any money. <laughs> yeah. I, and, I, and I think you're, what you're doing is you're talking about the tenants, obviously. Well, and, I was talking about I, lenders, but you were talking about tenants when we were chatting. Yes. Right. And yeah, so lenders or the tenants, I, I think it's definitely important to reach out to them, right? You, this is a time where you have to be proactive. I mean, the whole entire world is going through something that uh, we, we've never really seen or experienced before. I mean, you know, this is this is bigger than the Great Depression. You know, it, it's, could this, be, this yeah. is massive. Yeah, yeah. It, it, this is huge. It, you're right. It, it could be. It could yeah. be. Right. And we can get a little bit deeper into that. But let's kind of let's go back to the tenants now or the, or the lenders. Right. And and so what I've done and what I've told my clients to do and investors are like to make sure you reach out to every single one of your tenants. Um, find out if they've been impacted by it, um, find out how them and their family are doing, find out if they're going to have any potential issues with paying their rent come April 1st. Um, and, and that's super important. And, and then number two, if they have been impacted by it, then you got to try and do some form of a compromise. And so the big question now is, you know, do you issue the N4? 
And under normal circumstances, I would say yes. In these circumstances, I'm saying no. And so I'm going on the limb and saying it. And the reason being is the LTB is close, which is the landlord and tenant board. It's not going anywhere anyways. And this is the time I think where we, we've got to be humans. We've got to compromise and we've got to see how we can help each other. And, uh, you know, if they've lost a job and see if you can maybe, you know, do partial payments or maybe um, dip into last month's rent or maybe, um, you know, maybe open up a PayPal account and take credit card payments. So there's different things that you can do. This is the time to be creative and, and, and innovate. And, uh, and that's the message that I'm trying to get out there in, in regards to issuing N4s and making a bad situation worse. This, this is not the time to do that, right? Yeah, so, so you mentioned a couple things there. And the credit card payments um, it is actually, the I guess, the government was talking with uh, the credit card companies to lower the rates for yeah, during this period to make this mm -hmm. as an actual option to people, right? Make it a, a, a something that's available so that they can borrow money against it, not and get in ridiculously in a, a word, uh, sorry, a worse spot by the time they're done. Um, right. The when you're talking about the N four, um, yeah, it's a little different from Canada to US. So the, with the when we were talking mm. to a property manager down there, the yeah. discussion we were having is. Yes, same sort of thing. Like they don't, they have no, their their court system is closed. So yeah. a lot of it is, does it make sense to do the issue the same things? And we were taking a slightly different stance on it. I'm not saying okay. either way is right, but right. what we were doing was we were approaching. He was, he was going to approach the tenants and yeah. ask them what you could afford. It, it mm -hmm. wasn't like and like just come up with a number that you can afford and you just be quiet and you just let them talk. You leave it in right. their fault just to let them speak their mind and come up with something. And zero wasn't the option. It was come up with something, even if it's right. a small amount to come up with something. And then if we were going to do is basically backload the, you know, so once this thing was over, we would increase the payments a little bit so that we could catch up. And we didn't want to have a large amount. We wanted to be increasing rent by like $25 or $50 a month. So if your term was gonna uh, expire before that happened, we were gonna do a lease extension right now and so right. that we could stretch this out and we'd slowly get it back across a longer period of time so that it was more reasonable. If the tenants were taking a stance and they weren't willing to work with us to say, no, we're not paying anything, we're done, we're not, we're, you're, until we, the court system's open, we were gonna start the eviction process and we mm -hmm. were going to get it in because the way the court system works down there, it was a list. So we wanted to get on the list right? because who knows how far this is going to get backed up right? when it reopens. I'm not sure if the LTB works the same way that they're actually going to do a list. I don't think that they work the same way uh, for picking you know, the order it comes in. I don't know if it works the same way as that. Yeah. So, I mean, look, I, again, I'm not the yeah, expert at that side, yeah. of, but, but, but what in Canada, what I would assume is that, you know, you're going to issue that in four, then you got to go in, you got to do the L1. Uh, and so I know you can actually do it online. So that may get you in earlier in that order. But man, I mean, the whole entire thing is it's just going to be so backlog. Whether it's it, going to be bad. It, yeah, it, it really is. Right. And so I'm going down the road of, of, of compromise. But uh, but I do understand what you're saying as well, too, that, you know, if, if they're saying but we're hey, trying we're, to be reasonable, we're making yeah. something. We're and, 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 I do, yeah. and I do like that approach. I do like that approach to say, hey, look, what can you do? And, and that does make sense. Right. So yeah. I, I think you're kind of coming along that same lines as well, too. But, yeah, if they're just drawing that 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 line in the sand, then yeah, you, you've got to draw your line in the sand as well too. Yeah. So it goes both ways. Okay. So we're talking about tenants. We've talked about lenders a little bit. What else? I know neither of us are professionals to know how this is going to play out, but yeah. how, how, if, if you had, if you were just having a casual conversation with me, how, how do you, how do you see this going? Do you think it's going to be a long period of time and how, how is this going to impact everything? So I think they're going to figure out the virus stuff. I'm hoping within the next, say, two to three, two to three months, okay. right? Because you got to remember too, right? What they're trying to do right now, if you hear, is they're, they're trying to flatten the curve. And so, uh, again, I'm not an expert, but to me, flattening the curve means you have to now elongate it. It means it's going to take a longer period of time. But I get why they're doing that because they don't want to overwhelm the hospitals. And yeah. so for 
the government coming out and saying, hey, look, you know what, we're shutting down for two weeks, it's digestible. Um, then they may come back out again and say, okay, look, guys, just one more week, you can digest that. You can't come out and say, this is going to be two months. That's hard to digest. And so that's where I think it's going. Um, I'm, we're, we're seeing, I'm starting to see the slowdown now in the real estate uh, out here where our investors don't want to make that move, and I get it. However, we still see activity out in the market. And I think a lot of that activity, though, is obviously people that need to move, maybe have sold their homes, and, or there are some are, some are investors where they, they want to jump into the market. I think that's a smaller segment. Yeah. I think other investors are now kind of looking the sideline and say, hey, let's kind of just wait to kind of see where, where, everything, um, where everything kind of falls. But I think we are 100%, I think we're going into a recession. Are we going into depression? I don't know. But I think that there is definitely going to be repercussions a year, two years, possibly three years out. I don't know how bad that is, but I still think there's going to be some form of repercussion that far out, right? Because, I mean, you know, you look at the small businesses. Some of these small businesses, uh, it's, it's going to be tough for them to kind of get back into it. Some of them may not be able to get back into it, right? Um, yeah. You know, I look at my business. We, we've almost grinded right to a halt. I, I've got, uh, I've got, uh, you know, employees that I've got to pay, and I got to take a look at that. We're looking at numbers already. Where can we cut stuff? You know, uh, cutting out on some social media spending. It's, it's so. It's everybody is impacted by this. It's, it's, uh, it's, 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 look, it's tough times. However, I always like to still look at silver linings, and I think there is going to be some silver linings in this, right? I think. Again, there's there's no growth without pain, and so we're going to have to go through some serious pain here. Um, however, I think there's going to be some great innovations through this um, in regards to now. You, you know, you're seeing companies where, you know, everybody can now almost kind of work from home, but they had to they had to innovate where they didn't have all the VPN connections available for all these people to. Now they can, and now maybe they say, hey, look, why do we need all these buildings down there? You know, maybe they can now be converted into condos or affordable houses. Who knows, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Mother Earth now is, has, you know, we're giving her a break. There's no very little planes in the sky. We're not polluting the ocean. You know, this could help us to, to kind of, you know, get back to a little bit of a greener Earth, right? So, yeah, yes, I saw like be on the, the canal in, I think it's Italy, that they have the dolphins are in there. They haven't been there in 100 years. Right. They're just like stuff's coming back because it's not all... Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's given it a chance. So this so this is not all bad. It is painful, but it's not all bad, right? Here, here's a, here's a great analogy. You know, can you call a touchdown a touchdown if there's no linebackers that you have to get through? Right? <laughs> <laughs> you, so you yeah. got to go you got to go through some pain for that growth, right? And and it sucks and I get it and it's tough. And that's why I'm telling people now more than ever, the most important thing that you if if you haven't done the mindset stuff, or if you okay, if you've done the mindset stuff now more than ever is a time to really dig into that. If you haven't, then you better get into it because this is going to be there's going to be some pain here, right? Yep. Going to be some pain, but but there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, and that's a good thing. Yep, and they they always say even if you look at the past recessions, depressions, everything else, it's a cycle. It will come back. Um, but if we're in this spot right now. Mm -hmm. What do we do? What is the what's the best step to be doing? Should we be stockpiling cash? What should we be doing? Should we be preparing for cheaper prices? Should we be selling? Should we be buying? What What do you think? Yeah, so I think at this point in time, the the best thing to do is obviously I, you want to be liquid as much as possible, um, and uh, and if you're not, then you got to figure out some ways to be liquid or to cut down on some expenses. Um, in regards to mortgage deferral, I think that's that's a big one that a lot of people are talking about. Um, I my stance on that, and it's and it's changed from the beginning of the week and, and to where I am now. And again, right, you know, when you get out and you're in your and you're talking first, you know, you, you're gonna make those mistakes, and, and I'm fine with that. I have no problem with that, you know, because I want to I want to be able to give people guidance when things are murky. Um, and so my stance right now on the mortgage deferral is to take it if you need it. So most investors, or at least the way that I explain to them is make sure you have a buffer and, and have at least three months. So then now is the time to potentially start to use some of that if your tenants aren't paying. Okay. 
if you get to the point now where you need to do the deferral, then do the deferral, right? Um, because I don't know, I mean, they're saying that it's not going to impact your credit, but I don't know for sure, because again, don't forget the banks and, and, and Equifax or TransUnion, they're, they're separate. And so with all this chaos and, and everybody calling, the things may slip. So just, just be careful. That's all, right? So if you don't have to use it, don't use it. If you need it, use it. You're also giving the banks, by using it, you're giving the banks the opportunity to charge you interest on interest. Right. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. what they're doing is taking your interest payments, throwing it into your mortgage, and then charging you interest on it going forward yeah. until you finally pay that off. Right. And, and again, and it's a good point. And, and again, though, minimal if you're at a point where you could potentially lose your home. So you really got to kind of weigh those options as well, too. Right. So it, it, it's going to be it's, it's not a one size fits all. Right. Yes. It's, it's, it's going to be what fits you and, and where you're comfortable. But yeah, I think this is the time to be liquid as, as much as possible if you can. And, and waiting to do this might be a lot easier as well, because I, I was in the bank. And if you want to actually try to find out if you're even eligible for this program, it yeah. was like a four hour wait <laughs> minimum on, on the phone. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. so you're just like, you pick up the phone, and you call them and they're like, it'll be four hour wait. And I'm like, forget it. I'm like, we'll worry yeah. about that in a couple months whenever, you know, if it, if it gets closer to, you know, trouble times when I'm starting to get lower on cash, I'm like, then maybe we'll look at that. But like, if right. I, I was more looking to see, I wanted to call and figure out what the requirements were. Like mm -hmm. if like, you know, cause I like to be proactive. So I wanted to be like, if I need this, is it going to be like, what are they basing this on? I'm like, I'm sure like everything that a bank does has a criteria. So yeah. <laughs> I was like, what am, is this something that I can even plan as a backup in the future? That's why I wanted to get a home the phone with them. Right. And, and look, and, and I think now more than ever, I think a lot of investors will realize the importance of not speculating. Right. Oh, yeah. This has always been about cash flow. You know, um, and, uh, and and so I don't know what's going to happen with some of these people that were, were speculating, right? And, yep. uh, you know, do I think the prices of these homes are going to come down? I, I think so. I don't know for how long, um, depending on the way that they're able to get us out of this mess. I mean, they're going to be printing now. The printing is, listen, is quantitative easing to infinity. So the only way to get out of this, is they got to print and even the banks know they got to be liquid. You know, they're, they're buying back bonds, they're buying back uh, mortgages, they're, they're doing everything they can to stay as liquid as possible. And, uh, and I think that's what, uh, what investors need to do as well, too. You got to be liquid. Mm -hmm. right. I had um, Joe Fairless on my podcast, I don't know, probably a year, a year and a half ago. And he went through the recession and he's also yeah. interviewed, I think it was like 3000 people or something on his show. And yeah. the common thing he found that the people who lost their houses, they're people who weren't having a CapEx fund. So what happened was, in it's, this might be a little bit different, but I know that banks are already starting to change their lending requirements. But yeah. if the banks start making it very difficult for you to lend and your roof goes and you don't have any money to fix it, those are the people that are gonna lose their houses. The mm -hmm. people who aren't cash flowing, well, they're just gonna lose their houses because that doesn't make any sense, right, for the rental properties. Right. And the people who don't have long-term financing, if the banks decided to close, which I don't, this is a totally different thing than what happened in 2009, where they were having bank problems is the reason for the recession. But in that case, the people who had short-term loans or loans that came due during that period were the ones that had trouble because they just, there's nothing else to go into. Um, right. So that's a little bit different. But it, it it is like, like you were saying, the things that really we know for sure CapEx, which is have some cash, really, for mm -hmm. things that could go wrong, mortgage payments that you might need to make, thing, everything, cash is king, and be cash flowing. <laughs> I know it might be difficult if the renters aren't paying the rent, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you I, don't no, do so I, much. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, but, uh, yeah, look, I mean, there's, there's definitely, definitely going to be some interesting times coming up. Um, but um, this is... Uh, these things can happen. You yeah. know, I, I don't think anybody saw, listen, I, I knew, let me say, let me choose my words carefully. I didn't know when a recession was going to come. And I mean, look, I think the way that Trump was running the, comp, the, the you know, the U S it looked like it was going to go forever. But I think, you know, you, you know, if you study history, which is what I'm really big on that, you know, there's always expansion and there's always recession. Um, but uh, I heard a few people, 
say that it was going to happen in 2020, but I don't think anybody knew it was going to be a virus. No, you know? no I and I, and I didn't, I didn't see this coming at this particular time. No. Um, you know, it's, uh, and so, but you know, we got to deal with this now. Um, and, uh, but again, like I, I'm, a, I'm an optimist, but I'm also a realist. And I think we were talking about this earlier where I want to know every single angle. I'm even, I take a look at, and I've done this for, for many years. I'll even take a look at conspiracy theories. I don't believe in all of it, but I want to know every angle and every side of it, because mm -hmm. if it happens, I don't want to be like, oh, I didn't see that one coming. I want to at least say, hey, okay, cool. I, I, I can see where they're going or where they're potentially taking us, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I look at everything. I look at everything. Because, I mean, I can tell you right now, nobody in their wildest dreams would ever think that we'd be locked down the way that we're locked down. Nobody yeah. in their wildest dreams would think that the, American, uh, the Americans would have armies now at our bold, bold borders. Like, th th this, is, this is stuff that's – every day is something crazy happening. So then now you, you need to really open your eyes and take a look at anything. History, study history, just study history. That's, I think, the most important thing, for, I'd say, because that is the best crystal ball. Do you want to know what's going to happen in the future? Just take a look at history. You know, you take a look at, um, I don't want to go too deep here, but, you know, there's, there's yeah. three things that always happen. Number one, there's always trade wars. That always happens. Yeah. Okay. And so what has Trump been doing for so many, so many months and years now? Then after trade wars is what? Then you have currency wars. And so what do you think is going to happen now with all the printing and everything that's going to happen? And, you know, do other countries lose, lose faith in the American dollar? Um, you know, does it go back to some type of a currency where it's backed by gold? I don't know. I have no clue. But I mean, at, at one point in history, it was. And then number three is, is World War. Now, I'm hoping we don't go down that road. Um, I, I don't think that it's going to be fought with bullets and guns and, you know, that I, I think, but it could potentially be cyber wars. I don't know, I, mm -hmm. I, but I just want to be prepared. I want to be prepared so that if anything happens, I, I, I know what to do and, um, and, and how to position myself. Right. So, yeah. but look, I, I, I still think that, uh, again, I'm, I'm optimistic. I think that eventually we'll, we'll get out of this. Um, and, uh, but I don't think the world will ever be the same. You know, I hope we can go back to shaking hands and hugging. <laughs> I think that's important. <laughs> oh, yeah, I totally agree. I like to yeah. travel. <laughs> yeah, and so do I. Yeah. And so do I, you know. <laughs> okay, before we wrap this up. Yeah. Let's do like two minutes of conspiracy. Yes. Let's, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but what was some of the most interesting ones if you're you're looking into this? I'm, I'm always curious. What's We won't go way into, like, you know, yeah, just we'll, we'll spend we'll, like two minutes on it. Yeah. Okay, so I've heard conspiracy theories of the, there's the, them saying that this is a bioweapon. Yeah. I don't believe so. I really don't. I, I, I think this is Mother Nature. I don't think that uh, Mother Nature needs our help to, 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 to do this. She, she can figure this out on her own. That's number one. Yeah. Um, in regards to, I don't know if you've heard about the 5G stuff. I've heard a little bit about that. Um, to me, that was a huge conspiracy, but I'm like, hmm, it, it does kind of make sense a little bit. So 5G essentially, and again, I haven't done it. Anybody that's listening, please do your own fact check because I'm, I'm not an expert at this stuff. Yeah, okay? yeah. Um, and so I think with 3G and 4G, you know, you've got your phone and the apps are on it and you can turn location services on and off. Um, my understanding now with the 5G is that it's not the case. It's, it's stored somewhere else. So then now they know exactly where you are at all times. And I think they have this over New Hampshire. And so now, imagine if we are now, well, we are, we're fighting a, an invisible um, enemy. And wouldn't it be nice if uh, they said, hey, Glenn, uh, we know where you are, and we know that you visited uh, Michelle over here, and you went and talked to Tom over here. Wouldn't it be nice that we knew exactly where you were so that now we can contain everybody? And so now in this world of fear that we're in, would you then not say yes for sure you know you're 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 fearful right now you want to go out but you can't because you can't see this enemy but if they can contain it because they know exactly where you've been it's just another way of losing some freedom i mean look at 9 11 right those freedoms haven't been backed out right yeah. look at the way security is at the at the uh, at the airports 
and yeah, you lost some freedom, but you, you in a in a weird weird way, you 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 like it because at least now you don't have to worry about terrorism, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. just less freedom. So so I think out of the conspiracy theories that, that I've seen and heard, I think I believe probably maybe that the most where I yeah. potentially see it going down that road. But you know, who knows when that's coming? But I, but but it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it's if they, if they have the ability, then it just comes down to making a decision if you're going to use it or not. Um, exactly. Like, for exactly. instance, I, I fixed bank machines, and our bank machines have the ability to keep track of all the serial numbers and know where the money goes. And they right. use it in Europe, but in North America, they don't use it because they've just decided not to. But they have the ability, so if someone robbed the bank, to follow the money. But they don't. Right. But right. It's, it's one of those things. Like, it's you have all this power, and it just gets down to whoever... The ultimate <laughs> gets to make the decision, but someone makes the decision whether to use the technology or not use the technology. Right. I mean, I mean, look, think about it. We've been giving them everything that they want. All the all the apps, the face apps. You you're showing all your face, and you, you they know what you they you what you look like if you're a dog, or if you're a squirrel, or if you're <laughs> you know. <laughs> so so it's so easy. You we 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 freely have given it to them. Remember that one app that came out where like if you're old. It, you can change, you know, if you're younger. So they know now. They know exactly what I look like if I was 80 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you can't hide. You can't yeah. hide. So, you know, is, is it a bad thing? Maybe not. You know, yeah. you know, you yeah. get, you've got you got seven billion people now on the planet, and uh, you know, maybe it's maybe it's not that bad. You know, <laughs> hey, look, I, I think you know when people hear of, you know, we kind of end on this. You know, they hear yeah, the right. word uh, Illuminati, and and I think people think that's uh, you know. Uh, it's bad and or they're trying to do something that to, to, to take over the world but i think when you really look at the world uh, the word illuminati i mean it's illuminate and so I, I think really the people at the top i don't think they're really trying to destroy humanity i think they're actually trying to rise, raise us up that, that's what i truly believe i really don't think they're out to get us yeah. you know and uh, and and that's 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 my belief and that's what i'm going to believe in love it gary people wanted to get a hold of you to find out about your meetup or about your real estate business or anything else. How would they get a hold of you? Yeah. So the best way to get a hold of me, you can check out my website, which is at uh, smarthomechoice.ca. Uh, if they want, they can send me a personal email, Gary, G A R Y at smarthomechoice.ca. And I always try to do my best to get back to, to anybody that emails me. Um, and uh, man, we, we went kind of deep there, right? Oh, but I, I, do, I do, I do, I do, I do like real estate investing. I'm, I'm, I'm a heavy real estate investor, but I do enjoy the conspiracy stuff. I, 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 find, it, <laughs> I find it interesting. I just don't let it keep me up at night. That's all yeah. right. So. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for coming on the show so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, man. I enjoyed it. Thanks a lot, Glenn. Here's some highlights from our after chat. Uh, so I think they just did that two trillion dollar. Is, is that going through? And they're supposed to give them what is a thousand dollars a month or two thousand dollars a month? I, I'm not sure exactly, but yeah. that was one of the things. The part of the interview with the, the tenants, yeah, was to be like, hey, if you don't have the money, like, are you working? What can you afford? Are you working? And I go, oh, I, I'm I'm not working. Okay, have you applied for the program? And they'd be yeah. like, what program? What's your email? We're gonna help you. Here's where you go. This is what you sign up for. You like just make it Walk easy them for through it. it. Walk yeah. them through it because if you help them, they'll help you. It all works because we're all connected. I, right. I need the the rent from them to pay the lender. It's all a big chain, and if yeah. anything breaks along the line, it doesn't work so well. Yeah, no, you know what? That's uh, that's actually really good advice. I'm jotting that down right now. Right, help the tenants and walk them through it. Yep. Send them a send them an email with whatever programs are. If there's a you know, uh, hey, if you're you don't have the money, you or like you just got laid off. Have you applied for EI? Because the EI wait right now is it's not like the regular wait. They're going way faster than before, and there's not the hold times. Let's get this get started. Let, you yeah. know, let's make your life easier, which makes my life easier. Well, they're just, they're so captivated and 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 frozen by the news and the numbers and the deaths that are happening on on television that they're like. Okay, I guess they're giving me money, and they're just waiting. It's like, well, hold on a second. You got to take action. Yeah, you got you you to go, go up there. You got to go do something. Okay, so what do I do? And yeah. it's, it's it's confusing. I mean, listen, man, I'm getting bombarded with emails, and then I get some emails, and there's like 30 links in there. I'm like, okay, yeah. well, like, what does this mean? And so yeah. you got to break you got to break it down for the tenants. That's really yeah. 
places. Make like a template. Like, hey, there's like the three problems that really everyone's going to have. And yeah. like, oh, you have this problem. Here's the email to fix yeah, that for problem. Sure. Absolutely. And just break Absolutely. it down, make it easier for them. And yeah. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. We should have recorded this as well, too. It's brilliant I didn't stop the recording. I could do an add on it. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Sure. Right. Whatever you want to do, brother. All right. Cool. So, All right. I'm going to run.